Hello, everyone. Welcome again to Percona Live. Uh, uh, my name is Fernando. I work with uh, the support team at Percona since 2013. First with MySQL, then we started supporting MongoDB and uh, in the last few years, uh, Postgres as well. And I'm, I am here today uh, presenting with my colleague, uh, Jobin. Hi, Jobin. Hi, Fernando. Hi, everyone. Uh, myself, Jobin, uh, working for Percona as a Postgres escalation sp specialist. Um, for the last uh, three years, I am with uh, Percona. Um, yeah, I have been with the Postgres community for quite long. Um, so total, I am uh, having 20 years experience in database systems. Yeah, and I, I have done a um, lot of work with other database systems as well, like Oracle. Yeah, over to Fernando. Thank you. Okay, let's go. Today, we're going to talk about Postgres in a high availability environment uh, with Patroni, and we are going to have a look at uh, some failure scenarios we could expect uh, to, to, to have to troubleshoot and, and, and handle. And this is only a 30 minutes, uh, 25 minutes presentation. So we are going to go more, uh, we are going to cover some aspects, uh, uh, but uh, the, not the main uh, Patroni architecture, right? This is the, 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 the diagram that represents it. And we have reproduced uh, this the same environment with a load balancer on the top uh, and uh, three nodes, right? Which are managed, they have their, their configuration managed by ETCD, except that, uh, so we will deploy the environment. In fact, we have deployed it already. Uh, and uh, we are going to test uh, the different failure scenarios. This is going to be our, our main focus. And I think this is, uh, the, the attractive from, from today's presentation. Uh, we are doing it the, the old way uh, in the sense that uh, even though we are living in the cloud world, uh, we wanted to give it a try at pulling the cables, the network cables, the power cables out of the servers and how they would uh, react, right? So we, we are using some recycled hardware from you know, some Intel Atoms from 10 years ago. Uh, very low performance, but enough for, for, for the task. And we have uh, deployed Ubuntu 20.04 on them. So this is our base environment. Uh, three nodes, uh, node 1.11, node 2.12, and node 3.13, right? So let's start with the ETCD, just so you have a, a, an understanding of how we prepare the environment. Right, uh, we just deployed, installed the, the package from the Ubuntu repository, the, the main one. And this is how the main uh, uh, configuration file of ATCD is. You see, we have node one uh, uh, defined there and we are indicating this is a new cluster. So we are going to kind of bootstrap the ATCD cluster from node one, right? So. Uh, we can just go ahead and start uh, sudo system ctl uh, etcd or restart uh, if it is already run, right? There is this is common going to show you in, in a second. Uh, it's, it shows the lists of, of nodes, but just a, a very uh, uh, quick uh, indication about node two. See the configuration file changed a little bit we are using uh, node two here. We are indicating there is a node one already in that cluster, and this is an existing cluster. Well, this is necessary for the configuration. And uh, I'm saying to restart ETCD here, but in fact, there is a one step that you need to do first, which is go to node one and indicate that we are going to add a new node and which node this is it, right? Same thing with node three except that we could be adding that node from any of the ATCD nodes. Uh, no, in fact, no, we need to do it from the leader. So this is the, the, the terminal uh, schema that we're going to use to, to show you this. And if I run uh, uh, the command uh, sudo ATCD uh, CTL member list, we are going to see uh, this ATCD cluster distribution. So see the first node here, uh, is, is the leader and the other two are, are, are following along, right? So this is for the ATCD part, uh, watchdog. Uh, Jobin, can you plainly uh, quickly explain why we do we need watchdog in this setup? 
Yeah. Yeah. So when we have a cluster of databases uh, this, uh, connected by wire, uh, there could be um, network glitches by which uh, the some of the nodes get isolated. Uh, this can lead to um, uh, split brain uh, situations where um, some of the nodes thinks that they are, they have the master, and the other other set of the uh, cluster thinks that they have the master. Um, many of the database systems uh, has the node eviction kind of concept uh, to uh, protect uh, this uh, from this kind of split brain. Um, and uh, when we have uh, Petroni, uh, Petroni also need to have similar mechanism by which uh, the uh, one of the uh, minority and uh, cluster, uh, the, the smaller part of the cluster need to be uh, killed uh, or removed from the cluster. Uh, so the uh, in in Petroni, we use the Linux wa watchdog uh, for doing that. Uh, the watchdog uh, mechanism is all about um, continuously uh, uh, interacting with the watchdog. Uh, if the if the node hangs due to some reason, or uh, if the the if the interaction stops, uh, the node node will get rebooted. Uh, that's a, that's a concept behind the watchdog. Um, uh, and in this case, we are using soft uh, dog, um, which is a software emulation of uh, the actual uh, hardware uh, watchdog. Okay, yeah. so this is it. So uh, we just uh, mode prob uh, the, the soft dog module, uh, or we can add it. In fact, we should add it to ETC modules. Um, there is a catch here, which is uh, watchdog should the, the, the device should be writable by Patroni, and Patroni runs as the Postgres used. So unless you uh, set up this uh, node, uh, the device file that is created owned by Postgres, then Patroni cannot make use of it, right? And a second uh, catch from from the Ubuntu setup, when I first started the the, the, the distribution. Uh, Patroni wouldn't be able to, to use the, the, the module. And the, what we found out is that it was blacklisted. So you may need to remove that from, from the default uh, environment blacklist file, right? So you do that on all three nodes. Second part is Postgres. So we started uh, Postgres 12 this time from uh, the Perkona uh, repository. So uh, very simple setup to do. Uh, this is the steps that we use it. Here I indicated we installed Postgres, etcd, and Patroni at the same time. But uh, for the for this part, it could be Postgres only, right? Uh, we are doing something different, uh, which is we are starting from scratch. So we don't have, or we don't want to have a base Postgres running already. So what we did was we stopped at Postgres and we removed the data directory from all three nodes, okay? And then the Patron installation itself, which is, uh, if you have the, the Percona distribution repository already installed, it's there. So you can just go and use it and install Patron. And we did some, uh, customization of the main configuration file, which I'm going to uh, show you uh, uh, very quickly here. Uh, oops. Uh, oh, I'm already on a team of, sorry. Uh, not one. So this is uh, the main configuration file, which we could do in parts, it will be easier. Uh, see, this is from node one. So we have the node one here defined. This part is defining the ETCD, uh, where it is, it is. So it is running on this part on node one, uh, and you are going to adapt it for each one of the nodes, right? This is the bootstrap part, which is only used when you are allowing Patroni through Bootstrap uh, Postgres for you, right? Um, and this other part, you can define several different aspects of the Postgres configuration itself. Uh, we are not using archiving for this test, so it is commented those lines. And uh, this is the pga underscore hba.com file. So we are operating from uh, this networking and uh, uh, you have other details here, such as users and, and passwords that could be used. Uh, 
down here, we are indicating the use of uh, the watchdog, which is optional, but it is not, right? Because if you don't have it, then uh, uh, you can't have it running uh, in an HA, like uh, autonomous way. Uh, Joe, being in, anything I forget to mention on this file? No, we are good. Yeah, we are good. Nice. We are good. Clear. Okay. Yeah. yeah, we need to keep moving. So uh, it's a matter of restarting the service uh, and uh, checking the status. So I did not do that uh, here. Uh, so let's just do for each cluster. So you can see uh, there is no Patroni and there is no Postgres running. And there is uh, uh, not, uh, oh, there is some old stuff here, which I'm going to remove everything. Oops, there we go. And we can just do system CTL start Patroni as sudo obviously. So there is a, a similar command to etc ctl, which is uh, patroni ctl, and then the configuration file list. And this command will show you uh, what is the status of the cluster, right? So right here, we are using the stampede cluster, which we define in the configuration name. Um, and this is node one, and this is the leader, right? Um, for the other nodes, we are going to do uh, the same thing, right? So let me do it very quickly. Uh, let's, oh, here is already out. So I can ju just do system CTL start uh, Patroni. And uh, you see, uh, Patroni should be spawning the Postgres process. There, there it is. So if you come back here and we check, we have two nodes now. Node one remains the cluster a leader and there's node two uh, acting as a replica. Okay, same thing here. Let's just uh, check Postgres 12. Okay, this is clear. And there we have it. It is still stop it in you no know, taking a couple of minutes. And there we have it now. Right, our three clusters. So we do it on the tree and then we set up an AJ proxy from the repositories as well. Uh, and uh, this, I did it on my main laptop, so we could uh, check how it is. Basically, what matters most is this. We created two uh, groups, the primary and the, and the standbys. And the primary, uh, it is listing on port 5000. Right, uh, C uh, indicated as master. We included all three nodes in this group, but we also included all three nodes in the standbys group, right? Uh, as a round robin. And this is a, a, the HTTP uh, a, a API request that is going to tell if a, a node is a replica or it is a master. This is used to communicate with Patroni uh, directly. Right, Jobin, uh, anything I'm missing here? Uh, yeah, the Patroni provides a REST API, so uh, the HA proxy uses the same uh, REST API to detect uh, the master and uh, standby. Yeah, so uh, for this test, we did a few uh, uh, checks just to see if it was working. Uh, let me show you how this works more or less. So if you come here and we just do uh, uh, an attempt to uh, do a select to port 5,000, we are going to get 
node one because node one is the master, right? If we try the same thing, but we do it on port uh, 5001, we get a replica and then we get the other replica because it's in round robin fashion, right? So uh, we can also check the configuration on the local host. So for the workload today, uh, we are going to use a tool that Jobin wrote, which is the AJ tester, right? And this tester is going to uh, just continuously doing uh, writes for the AJ tester uh, on part 5000 and reads for the part on the part 5001. So we are going to use a similar setup to this one, except I, uh, let me see, PG scripts. Uh, I think I put it on downloads. PG scripts, uh, Patroni, AG, AG, okay. I think I did not create the database. You, you can set up your um, settings here, your connection settings here, but you do need to connect and create a database first. All right. And this is what I'm going to do here on node one. And uh, and that's done. And so we can just come here and run AJ proxy on this part on node 5000, right? So it's continuously running to the master, which is dot 11. Same thing here. except here we are going to write to the replica, right? It is connected to one replica and it is keep, keeping running uh, records to the same replica. If we do a control C, it will uh, go and do another connection and then it goes to port 13, right? So let the fun begin. Uh, so let's start trying the, the different testing failure scenarios. Uh, the first one I wanted to try is a simple loss of network communication, right? So what happens if we unplug the node from, from one of the replica and then from the primary? So let's try this. Uh, uh, I can just show this here kind of continuously. I think it's the best thing to try. Uh, How about that, the jobbing is good enough? Yeah, yeah. Let's see. So we said we are going to first unplug one of the replicas. So the replica that is connected in this uh, part here is the replica 13. So I'm going to just unplug it from the network cable and see what happens. So here we can see we stopped uh, writing to that to that replica, right? There is going to be a timeout, uh, and here we are going to see it retrying the connection, and now it is connecting to uh, a replica uh, node two, right? Here in Patroni, it's still showing uh, the node, well, not anymore, right? Now, node three is not showing in, in, in this setup anymore. So let me plug it back in. And uh, uh, let's wait for it to get back. Oh, it's back already, right? Let me do a control C and C. Oh, new connection is already back to the, the previous node that we had deconnected. So the first part is let's do it on the on the two uh, on on the leader, right? Node one. So I am going to now unplug network from node one, and we see it has affected the writes here. The writes stop it. 
So let's see what happens. How, how. There is, of course, uh, 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 oh, this, this one is not, this script is not, uh, uh, it's not ready to just reconnect automatically, I guess. Well, this uh, is, is normal, right? Because uh, we just uh, deconnected from the first node. So let's try it here. Troni CTL C C. So node two is, is the new leader. So it just took a little bit more time for it to work need to figure this out but so see automatically the 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 server uh, patroni uh, just uh, elected a new leader and made it the new primary so all the new uh, rights are going to node uh, 2 now node uh, 12 right so i am reconnecting uh, node 1 back and let's just see Oh, we, we have it back, okay. Uh, and so this new new uh, uh, node two should uh, become a new uh, replica now as it is right now. So even if uh, the server crashes uh, uh, and you need to replace the drive or something, uh, Patroni is going to reboot uh, repurpose the, the server, uh, it can take a backup and rebuild the data directory if uh, necessary. So that server is now a replica. So if we, we restart here, we see that new read connections are going to node uh, one now, All right? So uh, unplug network cable from one replica and the primary. So what, what gonna happen in that situation? This should be a major issue, but uh, uh, let's see. So right now, the, the, let's unplug from node two and node three at the same time. So node one remains, it's this one, and we have the information from uh, from Patroni here being updated on the status, right? And uh, let me just make sure, yeah, this is right. So let's see. Here, the replica continues to run at node one and it's still saying node two is the leader. What's the problem in this situation? Uh, ETCD lost the quorum to make any change. So it cannot elect a new leader, right? This is uh, uh, the famous uh, problem of the uh, split brain situation. So if you, you lose two nodes uh, from the same time, then you need to do a manual intervention to get them back. So I'm just plugging the nodes back in place and let's see what's next. So the power outage, power outage will be uh, an also common situation, a full server crash. Well, not common, right? But uh, one that we could expect uh, to have. So uh, let's wait to see uh, until everything is back. Oh, I just forgot to do this. Right, node one is back at the leader. And I'm going to just remove the power cable from this server. But first, let me just uh, start this mechanism here so we can keep following up. So power cable out of node one. And let's see how much time. So here we already lost the, our rights because we lost our connection. And here we still have Patroni 
believing that node one is, is the leader. Let's see how long that takes. Ah. Okay, so see it appointed node three as the leader now. So if we get uh, the system back, it is now writing to uh, node, third, uh, node three. Okay, so let me get it back on. Uh, and it started. And uh, let, uh, let's give it time to recompose itself. So another scenario we wanted to try is uh, what happens if you just queue uh, Postgres, right? Uh, so let's see. Uh, on the, the replica as well, what, what the concept that, that they should be understood is that uh, Postgres is being managed by Patroni. So Patroni, once you have Patroni in place, Patroni is going to start and stop uh, Postgres. So in this sense, uh, if Patroni sees that uh, uh, Postgres is stopped, it is going to uh, restart it again itself, right? So if we come here to uh, node two, uh, well, wait, the leader is node three. So let's go to node three, right? And uh, let's see, which one should we kill, Joby? Let's kill uh, this uh, out of, uh, 51, uh, in fact, we should queue the main process, right? So this is uh, really uh, working as intended. Yeah. And there goes uh, Postgres, except that see, uh, the, uh, Patroni uh, has already uh, spawned a new one. So uh, wait, 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 where am I? I did it from node three, right? So Patroni still thinks this is the leader. Let me reconnect to node one. And well, see what happened was this, uh, Patroni responded at the process of Postgres on node three, which we, we just killed it, and uh, it maintained it as a leader. So this is the first thing that Patroni does if Postgres dies. It just don't uh, promote another uh, member of the cluster uh, to the primary. It just tries to, uh, to get the, the primary up again. So what here, what happened is we lost uh, Patroni, I guess, from node one, which we, we removed the cable and I just reconnected it. Patroni is not run. Let's see if we can start it. So what is the problem? Is it DCD here? Yes. Ah, I know what happened, Jobin. I forgot. I forgot to stop Postgres from starting uh, automatically by system D. So Postgres was oh. started before Patroni did. So Patroni could not oh. uh, restart it. That's what happened here. Okay. So this is a, 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 
an interesting information to have. If you are letting Patroni manage your, your setup, you should uh, reconfigure systemd so it won't start Postgres itself automatically. So, uh, if we start Patroni here now, Patroni is started, then Postgres should as well. And we have it back here in node three, All right? And uh, this is it. Uh, one thing I wanted to test with, with, with Jobin was CPU saturation. So what happens if the node is really saturated somehow? So we wanted to, to give it a try and, and just uh, uh, go to the leader node, which is node three and uh, just run sysbench here as root. In fact, I don't think we even need to do as root. Let's occupy all the three uh, cores on this server. All right, so uh, we can show you here what happens on top. Oh, no, 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 not here, but on node three. So we have pretty much three cores being used uh, uh, now by Sysbench. And we could even increase the, the priority of the process, but it, it's not necessary. So it is still working. Uh, this is a single threaded operation. So it, it didn't make that much of a damage, but what if you had multiple concurrent transactions right into node three and you just saturated that node. So, and this is kind of a failed attempt to reproduce that. And uh, so let's go to the next one, which is killing Patroni on node three. So PSOX wrap Patroni. What is going to happen? Uh, So oh, it is not being brought back. So here we just lost the master, right? And the master has been reelected now to node one. So node one is, is the leader. And since it is not back, let's bring it back. And uh, Patroni, not Postgres, right? Because Patroni, once Patroni is killed, is going to, to the Postgres process is going to, to be killed as well. So this is the last part of, of the test. And we are already a little bit over time, but let's just try it, which is a manual failover. A lot of people uh, uh, use Patroni uh, mostly uh, in a non-automatic uh, way to manage the, the system themselves. Right, so I'm going to do uh, here now is just to run a Patroni CTL. C Patroni, uh, and then uh, the configuration file, and I'm going to run switch over. And uh, this is something we need to figure out, but it, it's the connection to ETCD locally that sometimes doesn't uh, uh, work in the first attempt. So it is asking me, uh, node one is, is the master, okay? Which one do you want to switch over? So let's switch over to node two. And do we want it to do it now or do we want to schedule it? So let's just do it now. Uh, and there we go. So we break up our, our little script here and it already uh, decided for a new leader. So when it reconnects, uh, we can see it is now uh, writing to node uh, 12. 
uh, five minutes over time, let's see. Uh, Jobin, what is the difference between a failover and a switchover in Patroni? Yeah, the, the concept is um, the, the uh, failover will happen automatically when, when a disaster strikes. Uh, it is unplanned uh, event, uh, the failover is. So there is, um, in, in database concept, uh, we know the failover, uh, the primary goes down uh, un, in an unclean way and uh, the standby may be lagging. So there is uh, some data loss uh, expected and it is uh, the standby can assume the new primary role uh, if that uh, uh, loss is acceptable. Uh, but uh, when it comes to switch over, it is a planned activity. Uh, the primary can go, go down uh, clean. Uh, yeah, the, and we can have a, the, uh, the uh, proper, it's, it's part of maintenance. Uh, yeah. yeah, and uh, uh, as, we, as we see in the screen, we can even schedule it. Yeah, that's it. Uh, um, it's a bit of a messy demo, but demos are like this, right? I, I hope you had a taste of, of how Patroni works and we are out of time. So thank, thank you very much, everyone. Thank you. Thank you.